All right, welcome in Gun Talk Hunters. This week, we've got JB from EOTech, and we're talking everything from iguanas to turkeys, all right here. Hey, I'm KJ, dedicated lifelong hunter here. If you've got an interest in all things hunting, you're in the right spot. Whether chasing quail across the plains of Oklahoma or in pursuit of elk in the backcountry of British Columbia, you'll always find me on the hunt. All right, welcome in all you Gun Talk Hunters. This is KJ with Gun Talk Hunt. And you know what? I, I've got to give a special shout out right off the bat. Congratulations to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk Radio for celebrating 29 years on the air. 29 years of talking, only talking guns, legislation, three hours, well, really four hours if you count the after show, for... 29 years that's incredible so congratulations tom we love you over here um but today i've got jb mr john bailey from eotech joining us welcome in thank you good to um, be here so we, it's funny we were just hopping on the air and we were talking about iguana hunting right and it's absolutely incredible like you're thinking about going down yeah. you've got to go I, I i have to <laughs> <laughs> to me you know i do a lot of hunting but um Anytime you can have that kind of trigger time, like prairie dogs and iguana, yeah. where you have that, you know, just shot after shot, it it, yeah. it has to blow away, you know, a one and done deer hunt. Type oh stuff. yeah, yeah. Because you and I were in Montana later earlier this year, and absolutely incredible hunt. Uh, we've got some videos up on it. Go look at them. Um, but the amount of trigger time, it's it's right after you leave. You're like, man, I know this gun. I know where right. exactly where it's hitting. Um, but I will say. I don't know because you and Ryan had talked about a little bit, but actually seeing like, so when you walk up to a tree, if you're not used to like seeing animals in the wild, in their natural habitat, it's a little bit more difficult to pick up on it. Yeah. I imagine. Like, cause so like when you go out to, for, to the deer woods the first time you're like, was that a deer? Is that your eyes kind of adjust to really what you're supposed to be seeing, you know, those lateral lines and everything. But iguanas it's a lot different like they like we, we'd walk up and we go oh yeah yeah yeah. there's like three or four like i see three or four and our guide abner um he was like there's like 30 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, you know it's it's different because what you look for is you look really what you're looking for are, you're still looking for lateral lines but they hide from you kind of like what a squirrel a squirrel right. would do yeah and so their tail, they don't have muscles in their tail, like out to further distances. So their tail can just hang down. Okay. And so that's what you're looking for is you're looking for the tail. Really. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of movement when they're up there, right? They're just trying to stay as still as possible. Oh, yeah. They don't want to get shot. Right. <laughs> they yeah. know. They know. <laughs> like there's there's danger on the ground. Um, but Puerto Rico, if you guys are thinking about it, absolutely an incredible hunt. And I think that's the way to do it because Miami, you know, down South Florida, they've got them in, in droves and it's becoming more of a, more of a problem. But in Puerto Rico, they're captivated. Yeah. Like they have nowhere to go. Right. <laughs> so, so if you're, if you're looking for an excellent hunt and for kids, it is absolutely, it would be absolutely incredible. I really hope to take my boys there one day because I mean, there's stuff you can do in Puerto Rico, but two, it's, it's the trigger time. Oh yeah, and there's no recoil or anything like that, so they get real oh. comfortable. Yeah, yeah, it's all and it's all air guns. So if you're looking for a hunt, and look, I don't hold any. Everyone, I think, I hope by now knows on this show, I don't hold any secrets. I'm an open book, so reach out to me, KJ at GunTalk.com, if this interests you. And it's honestly, it's relatively inexpensive. And if you have your air guns, you fly with them around puerto rico like you would going from state to state mm. so it's you know it's it's yeah. a u.s territory so it's it translates just the same and they yeah. actually have a really good gun culture down in puerto rico oh yeah. yeah yeah their gun shops down there are fantastic mm. so yeah i can't wait it's on the bucket list now, actually now he's like got off. way high in the bucket list after talking to you and some other people i'm telling you man it's the trigger time especially dealing with eotech optics i mean if you're looking for a way like to reduce eye fatigue like with good optics 
Like if you're always in the scope and you don't get eye fatigue, yeah, that's a good optic, right? <laughs> like, and I cannot think of a better place to really test your eye fatigue rather like a prairie dog hunt or an iguana hunt. Sure. So, how? I guess that's a question. How would how how do optics on air rifles and regular firearms differ? Um. What I learned is, because I always thought air, every air gun um, had impact, like recoil, different recoil impact, right. but it's um, not true. The the air, the true air guns, the, the like ones the that pneumatic break, or yeah, the break. those that have that spring to mm-hmm. them, those have a reverse recoil that okay. can really damage optics. And we found that the holographic sight is actually one of the only ones that can withstand that, that really? air gun. Yeah, that brake type air gun huh. but everything else Would, i think functions the same so as. like your pneumatic air rifles and that's really what they really yeah. use down there is they use the pneumatic air rifles down there so i guess that would be just anybody's scope really i think anything that's that's fairly robust yeah. is gonna do well on those so i th- so i think that voodoo the new voodoo x line like the one to six would be ideal yeah. down there yeah that's what we're thinking too you can crank it i mean you you mentioned it <clears throat> you know longer shots might be 75 yards mm-hmm. so you don't really need that much magnification no. so you can go to one and be comfortable with one yeah. or just tweak it so it should be a perfect optic for that man i, I love it and so i've got to i've got to go back down there anyway because we, so i had shot i think it was like a five and a half foot these things are long like six foot is a is a really yeah. good one that you can get them up to six feet long but i was going to have mine stuff because i shot this one that was just this brilliant orange color mm. like and they come in like you can shoot like there's like real dark like brown ones there's there's black ones there's real vibrant green ones orange i'm trying to think what other colors are out there but i mean in a mix of all of them what isn't the color well, I guess not. I would think the color is dictated by the temperature or the temperature of that no, particular. No, it really okay. isn't. Really, like, you sh- like we we shot them in all different colors. Huh. Okay. While we were there, and it was, I mean, beautiful weather and wow. But so, and we also had you asked me if they were good to eat, and I was like, well, I haven't had it. I heard it was really good, and like it tastes like chicken, right? I mean, like everything else. <laughs> <laughs> but what they did was. So we had it boxed up. I had it in a cooler ready to go. And then with the amount of luggage that we ended up having, I wasn't able to bring it on. But so I went to the hotel that we were in and I was like, hey, they had it in a freezer there for us. I was like, I'm not going to be able to take that. Do you guys want it? And they like immediately said, absolutely, we'll okay. take it. So so apparently it is good. But, but since it's an invasive species, kind of like our hog problem here, you can't commercially operate it. So they can't you know, commercially harvest yeah. iguana to sell outside. So so that's kind of a hindrance for them. But I think, oh, man, I keep going back. So I was supposed to mount, I was going to get a full-size body mount of an iguana, which would have cool. been, would have been so awesome. Cool. Yep. But a hurricane ended up blowing through there after we had left and like powder went out and lost oh. lost my lost my iguana so i've got to go back yeah that's okay. that's I mean, <laughs> maybe it's a good thing yeah i mean it might have been a good thing <laughs> uh because i don't know if i don't know i don't really think my wife would have let me hang that in the house it would have made some good jokes you could do what i do is i always tell my wife it's been there for a couple of years now you oh just my haven't God. noticed it it's, <laughs> that's how i get all my guns in my safe is once they're that's in there good. i've had them for you know a couple of years so so once they go in, it's automatic. <laughs> That's the hard part, just getting it into the safe. Once it's in there, you could say you've had it for a couple of years. Man, I just because I really I think getting the gun in the safe would be the easy part. It's the seeing money go out of the bank account that's, <laughs> that's the true. difficult yeah, part. That's, that's the tougher part. It's funny because like because because my wife will sit there because you know I mean joint bank accounts all that. So she has like the app alerts on her phone, and she goes, huh. What did you order from T Rex Arms? Or, <laughs> yeah, right, you know, right. what did you what did you order from Brownells today? I was like, dang it, she caught me. <laughs> All right, so you and I have a benefit of being in this industry, so I do that too. Mm-hmm. But I always say, oh, it's a work thing. Work is covering it, right? 
<laughs> I, I mean, I guess. But we, then it never gets reimbursed. It, it never gets reimbursed. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The check's in the mail. <laughs> it avoids an argument at that time. At that point. Right. But then she comes back and says, hey, did you ever get? And I'm like. Yeah, yeah where's the reimbursement check for that? Uh, they, I Did I not cash that? Like, yep. Yeah. It is nice working in this industry to be able to get, get good discounts and stuff. Um, but. Well, and it doesn't work that way. You, it doesn't. Your, your wife will buy shoes and tell you she got them for sixty percent off, and that's supposed to justify the purchase. But when but you, when get you a, do it, yeah, you get a nice rifle for forty off or something like that. It's like, why did you spend that money? Right. But see, that's <laughs> see, I'm in a different boat because my wife doesn't. She won't do. She's not addicted to purses, buying purses or shoes. Like she no has no vices on like big per time purchases. Yeah. Like yeah. so, yeah. You don't have anything. To so I'm kind of screwed. <laughs> like, yeah, I just I get just get the shaft. I, I mean, that's what it is. Like, but no, she is good in that way that she's because we all have our separate budgets. Like, I'm usually operating in the negative. Like, that's where my budget <laughs> operates. She understands this. I have to catch up some months. You count on her to stay keep you in the yeah overall oh, yeah. positive. Oh yeah, right. yeah. yeah, and she does a great job of that. Yeah. But it's just funny because we do we get. I do, man. Like every time there's a class, I or like a class here at Range Ready, I end up ordering something new. Like, oh yeah, I needed a a P320 holster, or oh yeah, I needed a, another mag carrier. And so I just like go on and I I order it and I just don't think about it. Like it's happening more and more now. Yeah, yes. and 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 people think we get deals, and we do get deals. Like, and I tell everybody on the radio show, like, look. If I am testing something out and I got it for free, I will tell you. Right. Like, I will absolutely tell you. But 90, I would say 97% of the stuff we have to send back. So right. we, it's not like it's all sitting in my garage. Yeah. So if you come to break in my house, don't expect to sit there <laughs> and you like go, man, he's got a lot of stuff in here. I know. I've heard him on the show before. You ain't going to find yep. anything in my around. house. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's bare bones. Um, but I will say the stuff that we really like – we hold on to. Um, and I have to, that leads me into our conversation of second focal plane optics for hunting because we were in a Montana hunt and we were hunting with the new Voodoo X line and dedicated second focal plane for right now. Mm -hmm. yep. Who knows what's coming down the pipe, but this is dedicated to the everyday hunter. Right. And I'm going to tell you in a day where everybody is dedicating resources and their manufacturing processes towards prs long-range shooting and all these high-end scopes i mean you go into the prs game expect to spend over twenty five hundred dollars for yeah. an optic north of two grand for sure yeah yep. so so all the regular guys all us regular guys are sitting there going have we been left behind right like and eotech kind of said well Hold on. <laughs> That's exactly right. You know, and we didn't know that until we got probably eight years deep into Voodoo mm -hmm. and the customers told us that. We started really? looking at sales and our 5 to 25 is doing really well. And and our, it, our that one, is yeah, it's, by far one of my favorite optics. It's a crazy good scope. Um, and the 1 to 6 is doing really well yeah. too. But everything in between, you know, we did dedicated hunting scopes. We have a really yeah. nice 3.5 to 18 second focal point. Oh, yeah. But it's $1,500. You know? Right. So it... There's a, a, a group that might buy it, but we realized after eight years that we're missing out on, yeah. you know, that really key hunter or uh, recreational shooter that yeah. has good quality stuff, but isn't going to pay $2,000 right. for an hour. No, I mean, well, a lot of us just can't. Right. Uh, and that's, and that's the unfortunate part about it. But with, with like EOTech, what I've noticed is, is the brand name carries through the entire line so and in what that for what that for me means is eotech stands behind all their products and what they do is man if you have an eotech on your gun you know what you're getting yeah like and that's and that's what i really appreciated about the voodoo x line is that it is dedicated to the hunter like the second second focal plane duplex low uh, reticle which i absolutely love just simple yeah that's it takes the guesswork out of it yeah. yeah yeah if you ever have a chance and we have some videos on our website that show a tour of our mm -hmm. uh, facility 
we by far have the best testing equipment in the yeah. industry. I would put it against anybody. Really? Um, and we really do put the Voodoo scopes and Voodoo X scopes through the same testing that we put the holographic site through. Really? It has to do that. Yeah, and our, our management a lot of times hates that because <laughs> they're like, why are we doing that? They don't need all that, but... You know, you you but build it's that it, brand yeah, name. You build it for that perception, and people are yeah. assuming they're going to get the same quality um, across the board, yeah. and and we're not going to um, shy away from that. Yeah. We're going to keep doing it. So we put more into it for sure, but and it yields a, a much better product. Oh yeah, it, it's much better. But throw lever, and it's offered in a one to six and a two to twelve, which the two to twelve to me is is kind of an interesting magnification range and and level for scope because typically it's a like three to nine is yeah. like the sweet spot yep but it's almost like it's almost like a better version of the three to nine that's <laughs> that's it a three to nine is still by far the most popular selling overall magnification but there's not one that sells for more than $199. Right. That tells you. There's a ton that are selling, but they're all that cheap stuff. Yeah. So people want that magnification. It's obvious yeah. there. Um, so we did this. It's a 30 mm -hmm. millimeter tube instead of a one inch, and that's usually what you get there. So better yeah. light. Um, but yeah, our thought process was let's give them a three to nine, but why not give them an extra low one and a couple yeah. extra high ones and work off a six yeah. X erector and uh, make it a really good quality scale. Yeah. yeah, but man, I'm telling you the duplex load. I keep saying duplex load. <laughs> the reason why I keep saying duplex load, and and this is so funny, is because it's almost turkey season. Yeah, <laughs> like it yeah. is. It is almost it's turkey close. season, and I used to shoot. One of my favorite loads was the, I think it was a Remington duplex load. Mm -hmm. And that, man, because it had a mix of shot, different size shot. And that's, that was my favorite load. So if I say it, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, because I've got turkeys on the brain, which leads me to say, like, I'm telling you right now, like, there's nothing wrong with the one to six. But we're also shooting an EXP, EXPS3 while you're down here and it's got a different reticle it's the dcr reticle which for turkey hunting that would be cool yeah it, it would work great for it because it has that reticle has everything you would use in a oh, turkey yeah. situation you know really small finite dot mm -hmm. that you can easily put on the head still has the partial ring to kind of frame the head and, and that's where i'm going it's yeah. got they so it's not a full like bullseye. So it's kind of a, I mean, I guess the kind of top, the top from, what is it, 10 to 2? The reticle looks like parentheses, really. Yeah. You know, we cut out the top part yep. just to clean it up. And then we removed the bottom and added a chevron for a really close yeah. um, zero. But yeah, the the remaining part of the, the ring is uh, almost looks like parentheses. Yeah. So it's still... and. You know, what's really cool about turkey hunting and, and using a holographic site is that that circle represents your shot pattern. Basically, as that yeah. as the circle is further out, it's getting bigger and bigger, yeah. you know, and same thing with your shot pattern. So if you're framing that turkey head in that circle, you're basically seeing your shot pattern before yeah. you pull the trigger. That's crazy. Yeah, that's fun. Have you guys done any testing on that yet? <laughs> it, I'm telling you, you go when you go and, and pattern your shotgun, you'll, you'll just see it. See it. Yeah. You'll see it. Yep up here on the target and that's man that's something not many people do is is target their or pattern their shotgun anymore i mean i'm serious <laughs> i don't know why people don't do it you got it you should be doing it right now really um but i haven't like i've talked to many guys that are like ah oh, it's it's a shotgun how are you gonna miss well uh, that's pretty easy I, I've pump the brakes miss. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah pump the brakes on that one it's it's always wise to, to pattern your shotgun but yeah the so the chevron what's cool is if so if you let's say the if you're shooting a 5.56 five, or you're out coyote hunting or something like that this now coyote hunting in that optic mm -hmm. would be huge especially if you're using a 5.56 five, because zero to let's say the the red dot is zeroed at 50 yards right the chevron correct me wrong, correct me if i'm wrong is your reference for seven yards and in that's it yep yep so if you're using like a, a traditional red dot yeah. just a dot um you can do the same thing your dot is zeroed at 50 probably close to 200 yeah. you know with that 
Um, but if you're in a close engagement indoors or something yeah. like that, and you have to shoot, there's that point of aim, point of impact shift. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to basically raise the reticle up. To and you could target. be shooting in air. Yeah. And you're holding in the space when you just have a dot. Mm -hmm. What we did, uh, we created a chevron at that bottom of that circle. So you have a, a point. Yeah. Um, but a really nice big reference to, to be able to um, yeah. pick up the target fast. But you have a point now at seven yards. So you have a seven yard, 50 mm -hmm. and 200 yard zero essentially with that reticle. Yeah. And so, and that's, it's, it's another case for using like a holographic site for coyote hunting because there's been too many times where I've been, you know, you've got your optic and you're like, okay, there I've got, you know, basically I'm sitting on a mound of dirt and out in front of me is all this open prairie with a few drainages coming up through it. And so, and this this happened, and it was it, it still makes me mad to this day. I'm sitting there calling, and I'm, the wind's perfect for me. And what does a coyote do? He comes from behind me, sure. comes around the bend, and I see him at literally like seven feet. Mm -hmm. And with a regular optic, you're going, I hope my magnification's right. And you swing over and you, it, you, that's how you miss up close coyotes. Yeah. So we've had two, I've hunted with, um, guys where, you know, they, if you're filming too, mm -hmm. they want that coyote to come in really close. Oh yeah. And so they'll put the call fairly close and you get something like that and you, you could easily blow it over the top Easy. of them if you don't have a reference. So. But I mean, Mrs. Will... I mean, it'll get you hated online, but I mean, it does make for some good TV because we, because we had a, Matt Rice. I was watching it the other day. We had one where he was, he was, uh, he was shooting and man, he missed one at like 15 yards, mm, that's painful. like, like many times <laughs> like, he just kept shooting and he just kept shooting. I was like, I think he ended up shooting seven times. <laughs> That's but he was impressive that he got seven shots. He, off. But he was running through the woods, and I mean, he was—you could feel—I could feel him, and I didn't get one shot off. <laughs> I could feel him getting mad with each press of the Bad. trigger. Like I could just feel it. And who of us haven't been there? I sure, mean, it, it happened. Yep. But yeah. So, what hunts do you have coming up? Well, like I mentioned off air, we were I'm trying to find um, a prairie dog hunt to do before it gets really hot. And yeah. we're, we're looking into that um, iguana hunt because I, I think the Voodoo X scopes would be great for it. Uh, yeah. Um, well, and it's such a, and I think a duplex load is, is good with those because you start, you s God dang it, I did it again, <laughs> didn't I? Oh my gosh. Duplex reticle, folks. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know why. It's just it's in my brain now. Yeah. It's not going to leave. But a duplex reticle, I think, would work better on that because in a lot of modern scopes today, is especially your first focal plane, it's the Christmas tree. Yeah, and I mean that gets busy quick. Well, if you dial too, let's just say you do go to six x, mm -hmm. you know, on a first focal that that reticle grows too. Right. So you get thicker lines, whereas mm -hmm. that duplex is a really fine line, whether it's at one or six yeah. or two or 12, whatever magnification you have. So you're able to really put a pinpoint yeah. um, duplex reticle on that yeah. small animal. Whereas, I mean, in a second focal plane, your your reticle is what it is. Um, and so like on these iguanas, what they do, like squirrels, when you're squirrel hunting, like they'll hide behind a limb. Like in their eye, all you can see is their eye. Yeah, and that's really where you you need to you need to hit them right behind the eye. I mean, it's it's a fine aiming point, and if you're not precise, yeah. because if you were if like let's say a one to six on a first focal plane, your reticle is really small, it is really small. Yeah, right. And you know, you can see it, but those with aging eyes, it's a little bit more difficult. Sure. You know, so. Yeah, it's you got to you got to have a fine aiming point, especially like that's why a lot of hunters gravitate towards second focal plane optics with simple reticles. Yeah, I think you just see all the common people are just comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. An easy, uh, crisp, fine reticle like the duplex. Um, you know, MOA adjustments. You know, you're right. not looking for and people hunting typically aren't running MRAD stuff, no. so we're able to do that. 
we did um we capped our wind engine elevation just because yeah. you know you got that thing slung on your back it can easily get hit by oh, anything and very easy <laughs> um we tried to bring the cost down by not having locking turrets and things like that yeah. so it's just capped wind engine elevation i think i think it's just everything that somebody that's going to go out in the field would need yeah and so you're looking at 799 to 849 ish like in that range yep so that's see that's not that bad for for what it is because you could put that on you could put that on any hunting rifle and be well you know the stigma is still there where people won't pay more for an optic than they do their rifle so yeah uh there's a few and that's what i think is selling into the the voodoo and some Mm -hmm. other high-end brands but you know to be in that $800 $800 range was important to us because yeah. that that basically gets people to think okay I can put this optic on virtually and you're gonna be good. it could be a simple you know Remington yeah. 700 or something really high end yeah. stuff so well and and so going going back to to quality of build and what you're looking for in a scope cuz cuz I will it I'm going to make a preference here and I'm going to tell you guys that there is a difference in between quality and like anything less like but let's just say that because it's all in your adjustments so when you go to cite that in and you're dialing it in and you go okay so I need to make two inches worth of movement so let's go eight clicks you want it to move two inches right you don't want it to move two and a half one way and then go well I need to come back and you make one click and it jumps four clicks right like that is that's a danger with buying a lesser product like and i don't know if a lot of people understand that they don't um we encourage everybody you know um may or may not have heard of the box test but mm-hmm. you sh- everybody should do a box test on either an optic that you have or an optic that you're looking yeah. to buy because that really takes you through the entire wind engine elevation range and if a scope is good you're going to end up right back on your initial zero and that tells you that all your clicks are going to be true throughout the uh, whether it's going up or down or left or right so box test is really important we run it through everything that we do too so yep on everything even the holographics yeah i mean there's less um it, it, it seems like it'd be, like pinpoint accuracy yeah. but we do run and make sure that there's yeah. uh, that it travels correctly mm-hmm. um we have videos like that on our website yeah. too that you can kind of see it you can see it track and forth. yep yeah and that's that's what we're talking we're talking about you know each individual click is what it's designated for so like 0.25 moa clicks at 100 yards should be a quarter of an inch like yeah well and the other thing too you have a we talked about duplex reticles but you know it's not unheard of to dial you know for distance on that stuff too so you need to be able to know if you run your ballistics that when you're turning it yeah eight m away it's moving eight m away moving eight m away yep and actually and more importantly it returns back to what you had yeah really accurate so um not a zero stop on those huh you just return to zero it has a uh, re, uh, zero reset. So okay. once you zero everything, you could pop the turret off, set it to zero, so you know okay. you're there. But the whole gotcha. purpose is to cap it and yeah. not have to mess. Yeah, with not it. have to mess with it. Yeah. Okay. Just know your ballistics. I mean, it's important. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we figured that out in Montana for sure. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> we did a podcast about all about my miss, like or my hit and non recovery. I watched it and I realized that I was kind of smiling throughout the whole thing. <laughs> you were <laughs> like, oddly smiling through the yeah, whole thing. It was thing. my way of jabbing <laughs> at you without like verbally jabbing at you. No, it was that was that was very unfortunate. That was very unfortunate. That was one of those that it it boggles your mind because oh, yeah. you could tell the way that you were talking and then actually even the the evidence that we had yeah it was a good shot yeah thing went down there's blood I, you know everything I, made sense and it's just one of those they're that, tough critters yeah like they're just tough critters and if i had to do it all over again probably what i would have done was i probably wouldn't have taken the shot if i like replay everything and i have a vivid i mean it is not a lot's clear up here but I have a vivid memory of that sight picture of what I saw, what I felt. Cause Chris harps on me. Like, what did you see? What did you feel out of that shot? 
and everything was right. But the wind was blowing, you know, 30 miles an hour mm-hmm. that night. Yeah. Like, so, you know, just let him rest, let him go. But Dave Herto, he, he nailed his. So, I mean, good on him. But yeah, it's strange. You're, it is. You're always going to run into that if you hunt a lot. I mean, you you're going to have that experience. But uh, but I didn't tell you it happened right after that too to me. Oh, you I, did. No, I I learned that last night. <laughs> you, oh, Ryan, you rat. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan ratted me out. Yep. <laughs> no, I was gonna I was gonna tell you. I didn't know how to tell you, but same thing. Like the it, I Neil Guy are very tough critters, and so. They told me behind the shoulder, behind the shoulder, behind the shoulder every time. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's how you kill animals. Like, Mm -hmm. and then I shoot it behind the shoulder and the shot angle was less than I thought it was, or it was more than I thought it was. So I thought I had a good semi quartering two shot and I thought my shot placement was perfect. It was not perfect, obviously. Um, and the guy, when I returned to camp, he was like, why didn't you shoot in the neck? I was like, well, that would have been way easier. Yeah. I was like, I don't even think about that stuff. When I'm, when I'm like, hunting for meat and stuff, like, I, I don't know why I don't do it. I should just do a neck shot every time because that's how I would shoot with the twenty two for 250. Yeah. Like, I would neck shoot them, and then it'd be done. Right. But I'm sitting here shooting a big 7 PRC thinking, like, yeah. you- <laughs> it's gonna be pretty easy like right. it's gonna anchor them well it no it doesn't and then 30 days later they find your nil guy mm-hmm. yep that's painful. and you don't get any of the meat so yeah that, that is painful it just sucks <laughs> so all right anything else new coming down the pipe from eotech um that you can, I share? can share but we do have um you know, it's uh, we just came off a shot show, introduced mm-hmm. the Voodoo X. Yeah. Uh, we weren't prepared to show some other things, but we have some uh, holographic model coming out late this year. Very we cool. We have a, a really unique uh, Voodoo product that is coming out at the end of the year, um, and then we're we're trying to get in uh, to the family of pistol yep. sights as fast as we can. We're in already with one, but. You know the concealed carry type stuff mm-hmm. and the enclosed I cannot emitter and all that wait stuff. Wait to see those. Yeah, that it, that I'm excited for, and I didn't know about that. That's exciting, especially from EOTech. Where can they find out more? Uh, our website's the best way to go. It's yep. EOTechInc.com. We have everything there. Um, you know, our social media is pretty active, so you can check out stuff there too. It's very active. It's awesome. So you guys check them out. EOTechInc.com. All right, that does it for JB and I. You guys know the drill. Keep those muzzles pointed in a safe direction and always be on the hunt. To see all of Gun Talk's content, go to guntalk.com, guntalktv.com, or sign up for the Gun Talk newsletter.